going on YouTube? This is Marcus and in today's video we're going to go through the first part of the December budget breakdown. It's going to be real quick to the point, not too difficult, not a long video, so let's go ahead and jump right on it. Okay, we're back at the whiteboard. The only thing I'm putting on the whiteboard is some of the major expenses that I carry through the first half of every month. Um, not everything is in there, it's just kind of the these are the things that are always consistent that I'm always going to have to pay. I think the only thing I left out is my tithes, my 10% given that I always do. So let's just go ahead, turn around, take a look at the board. Okay, first up, always got to pay the primary residence. That's a little over $2,200 where I stay at. I got an extra interesting video topic about that, how I actually came up on my primary residence, but that's for a later date. $740 is for one of my rental properties, a mortgage that I owe, so I had to knock that out at the beginning of the month. $530 is for insurance. I know, if you're like, man, this dude pay a lot in insurance. What is he driving, a Diablo? But no, the insurance is for three vehicles, one of which I'm gonna sell, because I think I told y'all in another video that my truck died, so I'm gonna end up selling my truck. So, but I gotta keep the insurance on it temporarily. Uh, with the vehicles, you can go ahead and look back. If you knew, I'll show you what I owe on the vehicles, uh, not a lot for the vehicles. And also included in this $530 for insurance is uh, two other properties that I own. The insurance for this rental property and for another property that I own outright that I don't have a mortgage on, the insurance uh, is included in this amount as well. $500 a month on groceries, the kids home, so they snacking me to death, so my grocery bill has went up since this whole coronavirus thing. Another $543 for extracurricular activities. Now, these are the costs that are really just kind of every month, the beginning of the month, I know I have to knock these out. So, the beginning of the month, I really don't make much progress on the debts because that first half of the month is really allocated towards just getting all the essentials out the way. The only thing I don't have included on the board in the back, like I said, is my tides. Um, so that's essentially it. The only other thing that I had to tell about is an unexpected expense that came up. There's always one, there's always something. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, let's take a look at the board and take a look at some of the, and I wrote it in red because, you know, it's, it's annoying, but let's take a look at some of the surprise expenses that we have going on this month of December. First and foremost, really, it really wasn't a surprise. I could anticipate it, but it was the cost of vehicle registration, $150. Uh, dental cost that I also have, which I anticipated, $549. I knew it. The cost was going to be out of pocket after the insurance company did their thing, so that's not a big deal. This big, huge amount here is $1,279. Now, you know, again, this video is going to be short, but let me tell you the story on that. So, my gym is upstairs on the third floor of my home. On the third floor, my kids each have their own room. There's a guest room for, you know, when their company come over, they can stay in. Then there's a third bed, a fourth bedroom up there that's just, it was nothing. So I said, hey, I'm going to make that into my gym. So I initially doing this whole coronavirus thing. I was working downstairs on the first floor. Somehow I just kind of scurried my way to the top floor. And so I'm in my gym, which I turned into my new makeshift office. And one day, a couple, maybe one day about a week ago, it rained for like three days straight. And I was in here, I think I went downstairs to get a snack, an apple or something. And when I went downstairs and I came back up, I saw droplets of water all on my desk, all on my laptop. And I was like, what the, what is going on? And so immediately every room has a skylight in it. So I would go grab my super long ladder. I want to make sure that skylight not leaking. Nope, there's a small leak that you would never know is there unless it's on some monsoon status. So, but for it raining three days, I mean, it rained for a whole day, it rained hard, you won't notice it because the leak is that small. But because it was, you know, two and a half, three days worth of rain, enough had accumulated, so it started to drip out slowly. And so that, because it was two three days worth of rain, enough water had accumulated to where it was actually noticeable and you can see it and it started to leak. So 
that's what where this one thousand two hundred and seventy nine dollar calls come from. Of course, I call someone to come out, and they they give me a quote of eight thousand dollars to repair the roof and replace the skylights. But the skylights aren't leaking, so I really wasn't worried about that. They gave me another quote of six thousand dollars just to replace the roof. Well, I know when I purchased this home about two and a half years ago, I know that I had about five to seven years remaining on the life of this roof. So. Next year, I'll actually start a fund so I can have sinking funds so I can set money aside so in three or four years, I'll have everything to replace it. And then they gave me the price of $1,279 to actually just tighten up the repairs. So that's the one I'm going to go with. I'll tell you, between this emergency and a car repair that I had to deal with last month, I had to tap into my emergency fund. So somewhere on this budget, I'm going to have to find some additional money to make sure I can still attack my debt, but replenish my emergency fund. I do have a plan, but I'll save that for the December closeout. So that was it. A real quick video just to talk about the December numbers. Look at some of the regularly scheduled costs that I have associated with the beginning of every month. And then look at some of the unexpected things and one of the big surprises that just kind of popped up and you have to deal with from time to time. Again, that's why I always say an emergency fund isn't an amount, an emergency isn't one set amount, an emergency fund is a continuous amount that you put into an account until you have three to six months worth of funds available. That's it. I appreciate you all tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment. If you comment, I'll definitely leave feedback to all my subscribers. Thank you. I appreciate you. For everyone who's thinking about subscribing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hey, I'm trying to work on this production thing. I'm trying to work on the thumbnail thing. I want to give you all some uh, really good content that's quick and to the point and doesn't look too cheesy, doesn't you know, make your eyes hurt or give you a headache when you're watching it. So I'm trying to work on the production thing. I appreciate you all and your patience. Take care. Peace.